Hi guys, I am Dhriti Karanath, an artist, instructor, mother, brand owner of Vibrant Parcels, where we manufacture all these handmade sketchbook, artist weight paints, brush roll, then small pouches, etc. You can have a look at my website www.vibrantparcels.com. Let's first discuss what we are going to paint today. We are going to paint a beautiful rose. Now, with this rose, I am going to walk you through various steps that we are going to take. And it is a wet on wet exercise mostly, but the wet on wet is done in parts so that you can keep your web paper wet for a longer period of time and work on it as you progress. Let's start with our painting now. All of us have a different style of rose painting and you might have already watched various videos in which people have painted roses. For me, it has to be soft and dreamy. I'm going to help you to understand the process in which you can make it really soft as well as there are no hard edges throughout the entire painting. Most of it we are doing wet on wet as I did tell you earlier. You apply an even coat of wash and then go ahead with your pinacridone coral. This is from the brand Daniel Smith and apply it towards the bottom area of the petal. We are not going to touch adjacent petals. Once we are done with one of the petals, we will move to the other petal, but not the adjacent one, as I told you earlier. Going ahead and adding some more of the darker values. It can be your same color, which is your quinacridone coral, or mix a bit of your red into the shade. You can always play with values. If you are someone who doesn't have much idea about values, please go ahead and watch one of my earlier videos where we have painted a lady with one single color. I have already added the link above. You have watched that I'm adding a bit of lines here. Now these lines are majorly on wet surface, hence they blend into the water or the moisture of the paper. Moving on to the next petal now, I have mixed some amount of yellow into the quinacridone coral, but then I realized it was really, really light. So now going ahead and adding some water to make it um, a bit more lighter in value and this is wet on dry method though i love to do wet on wet but i wanted to show you how you can work even with a wet on dry method you just need to pull the paints which are darker in values towards the area which are going to be lighter in value pulling the paints is a very important technique most of you might have learned it earlier I have mentioned it even in many of my audio videos about this technique. You just move the pigments from the darker places or the areas which are more pigmented into the places which are less pigmented. Going ahead and adding some more lines as I did tell you earlier. Blending well with the background is always the key. The better you can blend, the better would be your outcome as I always always say. If you are someone who is new to watercolors and do not have much idea about blending, you can go ahead with my really earlier videos where it is more beginner friendly walkthrough of the process. I have already linked the video over here. I continue my journey of painting um, individual petals and now I have reached a stage where I have to only paint uh, one of the smaller parts of the petal. Going ahead towards the bottom of uh, this individual petal and then adding some of the darker values. Once we are done with this process of adding the darker values, as it helps to stand out, it also adds depth to each of these individual petals and show off the colors in a better way, giving the illusion that each of the petals are overlapping each other.
This illusion is very very important or else the whole of the painting will look very flat and we will not be in a position to differentiate between individual petals which actually get together and form the flower. This is a pretty iterative process and we will repeat the same process as we progress. None of the adjacent petals have been touched as you can see. I give it the time it takes for each of the petals to dry off and then only we move to the next petal. There are many more florals that you can always paint once you understand the process. The process remains same for all the petals, florals etc. It's just that the color may change and the backgrounds may change a little bit as well as uh, pulling the paint situation may change a bit. So overall the application of techniques will remain same except the fact that you have to use different colors and pigments to work on the other painting which you want to add to your watercolor florals journey. Let's work on another one. This is uh, just a practice exercise. You can continue to paint with me or else go ahead, choose any floral of your own. Use the same techniques that we are using over here to paint your own rose floral. Going ahead and blending my color again towards the top. I have kept it lighter while I am towards the bottom side of the petal. I have kept it darker. That's how I am going about. It's the same rule which I am applying for every petal. There is no change in rule. I always keep a tissue by my side. Tissue is my best friend. I do pick up the colors from my brushes. If needed, you can see a lot of tissue by my side when I am working on now florals at least for sure. I usually dab off all the extra paints from my brushes into the tissue and then continue to work with the darker or the lighter value whichever I am seeking to attain at that point in time. I think we have discussed enough about painting the florals so let's just fast forward this process a bit and start out with the greens. Greens are something which I always always love. I mix my green with a bit of quinacridone coral, pink or red whatever is there on my palette. I go ahead with my yellow green color from the brand Magello Mission Gold. As many of you are asking me the kind of colors which I use, majority of my colors are from Winsor & Newton Professional or Magello Mission Gold. I also use Sennelier to a great extent, but other uh, colors and shades from different brands like Holbein etc. are pretty expensive in India as well as they are not readily available. So most of the time I do go ahead with brands that are readily available as well as are a bit cheaper. You can also go ahead with White Knights. If you have uh, painted with White Knights earlier, I think it's a fantastic uh, brand to go ahead with. The colors are very vibrant, nice and continue to paint with it uh, always. Adding the darkest value on the bud. Now why the bud is the darkest value? Here the petals are overlapping each other and they are very dark as there is layering which has happened inside it. Even if the sun falls on it or any kind of light falls on it, it will remain dark except the light and shadow effect which you want to show. For our painting, we are not focusing at all on the light and shadow of uh, the florals. We are only thinking about the normal structure of the florals and how do we continue to paint uh, more of a dreamy soft floral which is a rose this time in this tutorial. Going ahead and adding a bit of darker value over there and then the greens which are waiting for us. My painting is small, hence the brushes which I use are really small, size 1, size 2, size 3, size 4 or maximum size 6 brush 
which you would have seen me using at least um, during uh, this uh, petal and the florals part, which we did paint till now. Adding the greens, as I did tell you, I do mix some amount of my reds or the quinacridone coral, whatever it be into it. You can see how I'm adding the same color that I have mentioned and made it a bit more darker towards the end. We have to also work on the stem as well as uh, the greens of the bud area. Continue to work on the greens as you observe over here. I do paint a good amount of greens. I love painting the greens. Greens just add the kind of flavor, the kind of beauty your painting needs. In one single color always is not so satisfactory. If you work with more colors, it becomes more satisfactory. And for me, when it's about florals, I love to paint with various colors. The process of painting again with the greens is pretty iterative and there is not much which I'm going to add over here. You have to mix your greens to get the good final outcome which you are looking forward to. Having said that, you have to continue to work with your smallest of the brushes. I'm using my Perla Escorta brushes. They are pretty much available in India. Online, you can go ahead and purchase from Amazon or from Art Lounge, you can also go ahead and check online if any of the other brands do sell it. I am always in for using good brands. Now, good brands, it helps to practically ease through your watercolor, gouache, any kind of journey that you are building up on. It also helps you to continue paint and enjoy the process of painting. If you are struggling with the basic needs like watercolor paper or the kind of paints, the brushes, etc., you know automatically your journey becomes way more longer. As well as the frustration and stress is real which I don't want for any one of you to face it. You can see on the top right hand corner, I have mixed some amount of my sap green as well as the compost opera into the greens that I was adding over onto my paper. This is uh, something that you have to continue to learn and add. We are going to paint our leaves now. This is more like a flat wash, which I would be adding. And then slowly, steadily, you will see how I add more depth to any parts of this painting. Having said all of it, yes, it takes time to build on this painting. And it was a two hour painting that I really added up within 20-25 um, minutes that you see over here. There are a lot of iterative and repetitive process which we did in this painting and I don't want you guys to continue to only work on that process. It will help you to improve upon your watercolor skill set. But one single painting has many techniques which we have to continue to learn that can be applied in your future paintings and hopefully all the blending then painting Pulling the paints and all the other techniques that I've told you will be of some use in your future paintings. As you know, the painting speed is 1.5x. So you can go ahead and adjust the speed of the video before you start with any of your paintings. I have already told you in case you are someone who is in love with florals, please do go ahead and watch 
my class on Skillshare, which is about painting florals. And it's a seven day class with one bonus, which is seriously amazing. And you will find so many new things that you can paint from there. It's more beginner friendly class that you can um, find over there. Going with my lightest value of green and now I have switched my brush. It is silver black velvet size 6 brush which you can see. I also use silver black velvet size 4 brush for most of my florals. Florals is something that I love to paint with my silver black velvet as it can hold a lot of water. The Da Vinci brushes which you might have seen me using in many of my other paintings earlier for skies etc actually holds way more water than these round brushes of course that cannot be used for smaller spaces and areas and hence going ahead with this size for a better outcome. I will continue to add the paints which I did add for my florals with some more introduction of blue or darker value of green into it. This is all I'm going to do for this painting. I'm not going to use any kind of other shades or colors. Initially, when I started painting with florals, I was very inclined towards creating very vibrant backgrounds. But over time, I have learned vibrant backgrounds is something that doesn't look as dreamy as what you can create slowly steadily as we continue to build the whole of the painting you guys can check out my class watercolor florals master class seven days seven painting seven different style on skillshare where i have actually walked you through how i paint my backgrounds in seven different ways this is one of the way which looks much more dreamy and softer but there are way more vibrant ways which i have also taught over there finally let's continue to paint the background with the darker values in few of the places and lighter values in some of the areas watercolor is all about using less of pigments and more of water i always say this to everyone and in almost all of my videos if you follow the same process, I think you will have an amazing outcome. If you keep painting your florals darker, then of course the final color that comes up or the final painting that comes up will not be as impressive as you might observe the other instructor or anyone painting. So colors is one of the foremost and important things uh, in florals to keep them lighter and more um, I would say softer, dreamy, and keeping them more beautiful. That attracts way more people or that really helps uh, this whole painting to get noticed. Finally, if you have liked anything about this video, do give it a thumbs up and um, refer to other uh, people who would love to join the channel and have similar interest of artwork do give uh, comments and let me know what else you would like to learn from me this is uh, one of the third or the fourth videos of uh, florals i don't give out florals to a great extent as it is longer and i am not sure how many of you may be interested but uh, so many comments came in in the last video that you guys like to learn more about the uh, my way or my style of florals and i would love to share what i like to paint for my florals i will continue to do the similar way of painting the background even on the right side and then just uh, blend the colors sometimes i have to even pick up uh, the colors as you observe over here it gets into what we have painted earlier and we don't want the colors to move into our earlier uh, space of the floral nowhere over there so yes i do cleaning up uh, this area sometimes because of this for uh, cleaning up you can also use your flat brush that is a great way to go about it let's have a final look at this painting and i will meet you very soon in the next video where we are going to actually work on a different subject let's remove the tape at an angle and before you do that let your paper dry off completely